Hello, my name is Håkon and welcome back to my synth DIY project and this is what I did last night and went to bed rather late. So I've been soldering up all the wires now to this little Vero board. So all the connections from the pin header connectors that are meant to go in the MIDI Muso are connected to the uh, module front plates and um, although I did put the gates on in reverse order so they need to be swapped around but there is a problem because um, I started patching this up to the MIDI Muso just to see if it worked and I found that lots of things did not behave the way it was supposed to and then I thought oh maybe I'll just uh, remove everything and start over again just to make sure and just do it one channel at a time, something like that. But then it occurred to me, of course, I need to check if the MIDI Muso is behaving the way it is supposed to first. And I brought out the MIDI Muso, connected it to the Zoya and the MIDI Fighter Twister to control it, and it is not behaving the way it is supposed to. So when I did the first check now, the gates, and the gate outputs here were behaving the way they were supposed to, uh, but nothing else was. And then I unplugged it, I've tried to um, reset the mode of the MIDI Muso as well, and now nothing seems to behave the way they're supposed to. Um, so I'm a bit stumped at the moment. I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to try to do next, but obviously there is some kind of problem with the MIDI Muso itself that needs to be sorted out before I can start sorting this out, because this may now actually be working perfectly, only that the MIDI Muso is not working perfectly, um, except for, of course, the uh, cables here on the gates that need to be swapped around. That's not a big deal. That's just done in five minutes. So I need to do some um, troubleshooting on this. Um, in good news, of course, all the other modules are working perfectly. Uh, it's just the MIDI interface that isn't. Of course, that is a very important part of the project. It's not the sort of do all and end all. I mean, I was quite happy using my synthesizer without MIDI. It just would have been fun to have all that extra control for added expression and, and other things. Um, so I will have to do some troubleshooting, see if I can figure out what the problem is um, with with the MIDI Muso interface. Um, so I'll see if I can figure that out. Um, otherwise, um, I was working quite a bit with Vero board, and the thing is, it's quite a struggle to if you don't have the right tools to break the paths. I'll just show you now. So you see here, there are these. Probably not that easy to see actually. Um, every now and again, there's a little path that is broken so that it isolates a section of the strip um, so it doesn't connect to the one next to it. And that way I can connect several components in a row here that don't actually match up together. And also one long strip for a ground connection. Um, when I was doing this, I was using a file like this, which is not ideal actually, it's quite hard work. Uh, and I noticed that the official tools for doing this is like a sort of a drill that's on a handle. So I made my own drill on a handle. So this is a, I think it's a four and a half millimeter drill bit. And I drilled into this piece of um, ash wood uh, that I had lying around. Uh, it's just quite a strong material. I drilled it to three and a half because I didn't have the four and a half ready at the time. If, if I had a four, that would have been perfect. And then I just uh, punched this a little bit, sort of into, hammered it into the handles. Now it sticks really well and I've got a good grip on this and it will be easy for me to remove traces on the Vero board when I need to. So that's going to be really make my life a lot easier. Sorry. Yeah, I just had to check if the microphone was running there or if the uh, the recorder was running. So um, at the moment, I'm a little bit disappointed that the uh, MIDI Muso is not working the way it is supposed to. Uh, I mean, there are voltages on most of the pins, but they're just either minimum or maximum. There's no... Um, and they don't seem to respond at all to MIDI. So 
I will probably give it a little bit of a rest and try again tomorrow, I think. Um, it's a bit, I'm a bit disappointed because I was hoping to sort this out this week, but if this is going to misbehave now, um, it is, uh, that's not going to happen. It is going to have to, to wait a little bit. So I don't know if I've done anything weird with it when I was testing it or something, but since the gates were working earlier and then they weren't working, I don't really know what's going on now. Uh, but um, whatever the case is, I will um, try to reset it again, try to change modes um, and then see if it responds to anything. At the moment, it doesn't respond to any MIDI signal. At all, I also tried directly connecting it to the fighter twister rather than um, via the Zoya just to see if it responded to that and it didn't. Uh, so it's not the Zoya, it's not the MIDI fighter twister, it is the MIDI Muso itself that is the problem. Hopefully, I'll figure it out. So, anyway, um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time with more. Um, since DIY um, at some point I probably will um, if, if this doesn't seem to be easy to fix um, I'll probably just try to play a bit with my other modules uh, for now and enjoy those and um, I do have some other ideas though because of the when I was making the uh, the low pass filters for the um, these ones here for the MIDI interface I was thinking that it would be quite an interesting effect to use add these sort of extra static or uh, some kind of dynamic low pass filters um, as an extra module that you can patch into as well with a signal from somewhere else. Um, as Because what happens is basically it slows down the change in voltage. So if you have any signal that changes over time and you slow it down, you can get interesting effects. And I was thinking if you take one signal and you slow it down by different rates, um, and then output that to something, then you might also get a very interesting effect. And it might be easier to make some kind of drone effect, for instance, on the phenol if I do that. So I'm going to have a little look and see if I can make some other a passive module again that does that sort of thing. Um, and uh, and that will sort of, well, for, for the time being, probably take the place in my rack where the MIDI interface should have been. Um, but I'll see, uh, hopefully I'll be able to make this work at some point because this was a lot of work and it looks really nice and it would have been so cool to have extra LFOs and ADSRs and things, uh, extra gates uh, to work with the phenol. Um, I've put so much time and effort into this now. So worst case scenario, if this, I can't make this one work, I will order a new one because it's not super expensive. Um, and if I can make it work, that would have been perfect. But if I can't make it work, it's still worth it to me, I think, to get a new one because it's not a really expensive thing to get. So uh, it's a bit of a shame. It's an expense I didn't want, but I think it's still still worth it just for um, getting that, the option of being able to use the MIDI uh, interface with uh, the phenol. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you like this. And if you do, then like, share, comment, subscribe, join me on Patreon and I'll see you next time with more synth DIY stuff or something else. So thank you for watching and goodbye for now. Bye bye.